All right, this is the um, October 1st meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. We're being videotaped by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing later by our residents and the public. Uh, first item on the agenda, minutes for September 17th. Has everybody reviewed the minutes? Yeah. Any changes or additions? No. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for September the 17th. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 All right. Uh, next item on the agenda, warrants. We have three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $48,656, a payroll warrant for $111,419, and a payroll deduction warrant of $27,491. I'll make a motion that we approve those warrants. Do I have a second? second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. Phil, do we have any meetings? Yeah, Bob and I were at another frontier building renovation uh, thing where we dotted the uh, I's and crossed the T's on the 10-year plan, which will be unveiled next Thursday. Um, and I, I believe that there's a finance committee member planning to attend, from what I heard. And that, uh, good. And I did also let uh, Dana, the from the Long Range Planning Committee. Uh, gave him a heads up as well, just because uh, any any kind of it's the meeting that really, if anybody is going to pick it apart and and to have ideas and to really voice opposition to it, I would really love to hear that then. Um, so, um, so, and, and I don't know if we specifically invited you, John, but you would be good at something like that because that's your bail that's your bailiwick, and you might have some good suggestions. It's Thursday, I think the meeting is. Six o'clock at the LMC in at Frontier. I have oh, okay. the uh, the document if you'd like to take a look at it. Okay. Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Would he have a copy? I don't think that we've seen the final document yet. No, we're going to no. see that half an hour ahead of time. We approved what we thought yeah. the changes are going to be. Right. But we so, have to so verify. You, you may have the final well, document. I, no, I don't have a, f I, I have, I have a, 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 a substantial draft. Good. That's exactly, okay, good. Yeah. yeah. Which would be very worthwhile looking at. Um, it just, it, it, we're creeping up on it bit by bit. And so we think it's done. So, so I have, uh, oh, is that it? That was it. So I have a few, so I've had that meeting, and I'm trying to think whether anybody else, I know Tom was at the, the marijuana hearing, which was right after this meeting two weeks ago. We, we, we all, a bunch of us anyway, went over to Town Hall. There was a good crowd of people that came. I would say a lot of it out of great respect for, for Joe and, 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 and Mary and, and for the planning board mm -hmm. over the, all the work they've done. And it was towns who have not passed their zoning yet and they wanted to see what Conway did and they know how much work our board has done. So that was quite a compliment. And there were quite a few people from Conway to listen to them. You would think they're right on the verge of filling out an application to, to be growers here in town. Whether that will happen or not, none of them have filled out an application that I know of, but um, but it may happen. Um, and we had an FCAT meeting this week, nothing going on, nothing major. And we went to a, we had a, a regional planning board meeting at FERCOG um, that was mostly about solar and about the solar co-op that Greg Garrison of of Northeast Solar is doing. Uh, they're working on it for a big project in Wendell. And, um, and our energy committee is talking with Greg also about doing something or looking at what it would take to do something here in Conway. Mm -hmm. And Coleraine is looking at doing one in Coleraine. So mm -hmm. it, it appears to be a, a great solution for people in town that can't do solar on their roof or on their right. apartment or all of the reasons why people who want to do solar and, and applied to the Solarize project um, but they couldn't follow through with it for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. And also, it, it, um, Greg Garrison has gotten the, uh, the, the 
five college uh, co-op program, the solar, the state solar loan program, um, to to be included as part of this project, which means then anybody who is considered low income can apply for the state <coughs> rebates that people who are considered low income. And the nice thing about being considered low income is that. The, the income levels are all based upon Eastern Massachusetts income. And so a great many people who might be offended at the thought that they would be considered <laughs> low income, but qualify. But they qualify, absolutely. And it means that 20 or 30 percent of your panels will be paid for by the low income subsidies in addition to the 30 percent that the state pays everybody for their panels. So uh, Bob, is that low income or low to moderate income? Well, I think there may be a couple levels, but yes, yeah, okay. Uh, so anyway, okay. Is, uh, uh, Greg is a very dynamic guy. He's put a lot of work into this, and it really looks like it could be a great way for people to take advantage of all of the benefits of solar, mm -hmm. um, in addition to the other ways that solar is growing out here. So it's one more. Yeah, I've worked with Greg. Greg's good, good man. Okay. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, okay. I let's see. I went to the uh, the statewide municipal partnership conference in Worcester uh, last last Monday. Uh, the governor was there. The lieutenant governor was there. Uh, Secretary Ash. Uh, a couple of the other secretaries. Heffernan was there. Uh, Cronin from DLS. It was a good. It was a good conference. Uh, I attended the workshop on housing strategies, um, and that was pretty interesting. Uh, that was given by uh, the mayor of Beverly, Michael Cahill. He was one of the speakers. He had a couple of interesting things to say. Uh, a couple of creative things for housing. I also went to the uh, workshop for. Um, climate change and some of the some of the things that we need to do to uh, to avert any any real problems. Boy, they have no open slots in any of the workshops that you wanted to go to. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, they could resist. No, no, I thought that I, was funny. No, there, there was some 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 energy um, energy <laughs> yeah, speakers you know, there it's, it's, that, that uh, I wanted to listen to. Okay. All right. Is, yeah. that, is, that, is that good? Is that good, Phil? Okay. All right. Uh, um, I also went to the Massachusetts Selectmen's Association of Read Journal meeting in Danvers last week. I think that was on Tuesday. Road Warrior. Yeah, that was uh, that was a good meeting. Um, uh, it was very very comprehensive and uh, had a couple of a uh, couple of topics that they went over. Uh, you know, they try to they try to do topics at these regional meetings that that people will uh, will come to. I was surprised we didn't have a better turnout, but um, uh, it was a pretty good presentation. But anyway, uh, last Friday I went to the uh, Franklin County Chamber of Commerce breakfast, which was the United Way appeal for this year. That was very very interesting and. Uh, uh, very, uh, very useful. It was up at the tech school. The tech school always does a great job with the food, so that was that was fun. Uh, and that's all I have. Um, public comments. We have any public comments? I don't see anybody here from the public, so I guess we don't have any public comments. One other thing we just mentioned is that we did have Conway Festival of the Hills on oh, of Saturday and Sunday, yes. Yes. Uh, and all of the food was excellent. And we we missed you marching in the parade, John. Uh, I, Phil I, and I held up the banner. Late on late on Friday, my schedule for this week got changed, and a couple of deadlines got moved up. So I was working probably. 10 to 12 hours yeah. yesterday, so yeah. I couldn't couldn't afford the time. We did have but the t-shirts that Bob made up, which we are starting <laughs> to create expectations well, of being fashionable at parades. <laughs> this 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 could be a way of uh, getting more revenue for Conway. You know? <laughs> a lot of people told me they liked you the t-shirts. Yeah, this so, is good. But, but it did seem to me that the 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 participation by Conway residents seemed a little lower than usual, and the participation by non-Conway families. Um, 
seemed higher than usual. And how did you know? And, that? And, 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 and really, I'm basing that because I did spend a bunch of time at the kids' booth, and most of the kids there were not Conway kids. Massive number of kids from other towns having a ball, and their families and all enjoying it too. But um, it, it, and, and that may be due to the recorder articles. The recorder, right. put, we had right. a number of nice articles about it being a very family friendly event. Right. And, and, and I think that really worked. And, and also the comments from, that I heard that for the number of cars that were parked, people expected bigger crowds. It just seemed like the cars were there, but the people weren't. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, Saturday night um, I went to the, uh, the turkey dinner in support of the, uh, uh, the festival and the fire department. So that was Me good. too. I ate too much. That you must have been at 6.30. I was. I was, I was the there fire. too. Yeah. I tried to eat as much as I could. <laughs> that was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Was at 6.30, I was sound asleep by 9 o'clock. I loved yeah. it. Yeah. That's right. The trip to fame. Just no uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was great. I know. I was nodding now too. <laughs> yeah. But a lot earlier than that. All right. Uh, <laughs> All right, next item on the agenda, letter to Historical Commission regarding the town oversight of the exterior of the United Congregational Church. Do we have that to sign? We have that to sign. Uh, and essentially that letter is about the fact that uh, since the church uh, is scheduled to be uh, demolished, there's no longer any uh, requirement for uh, a historical uh, restriction. Essentially, again, because the restriction was put on when we gave the church money from the CPA fund and that was part of the, the contract. We got the money back from the CPA, uh, for the CPA fund, so that um, historical restriction uh, basically gets gets canceled. Yeah. So that's... So we that's, talked about this last meeting, right? And then you know, yeah. this is the letter written up. And. Uh, there are a couple of tweaks to the final letter that were suggested by the Historic Commission. Historic Great. Commission. Just rephrasings, including a date that I hadn't included, and saying historic preservation instead of historical preservation. Which oh, yes. I should have a vital, a vital change. Yeah. So, uh, a, a simple letter, but one that does officially relieve them of responsibility. Okay. And yeah. thank them too, which I thought was very good. Oh sure, and their 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 letter to us is is in this little packet of material. Right. If you want to look at that as well. Any other questions on that? Any, any? No. Okay, so we all know why we're doing this. Okay. All right, I'll make a motion that we sign the letter to the historical commission. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. I have both the new draft and the one that was sent out. Here. Fruit and detail. Well, we really are substantive changes. All right, next item is a uh, letter to the uh, to Mass Tank regarding the installation of the new tank liner, the odor and taste issues. What's the latest on that? We are uh, still waiting to see how the odor and taste issues dissipate. We can't really do anything else until school's not in session and we can shut down the water and drain it and refill it again. Uh, so that will be quite a while before we can do that. So, so can, can, I, can I add a little bit to his question yeah, right ahead. there? So the school committee at, at its, I guess I didn't, when we were talking about the meetings last, last week was the Conway School Committee where it was almost exclusively focused on this. Um, and we did direct the superintendent to have to create a drop dead date um, whereby uh, if mm -hmm. if it does not dissipate then the then the company the contractor will be taken up on its offer to replace the tank even though we know that that will be a huge disrupt and an expense to the school and etc cetera, etc cetera, but that that there it just can't go on forever and it's already gone on as long as the consultant thought that it would um, and so we left the creation of that date up to the superintendent, um, but he was directed to create a date and that, that that date be sooner rather than later. Well, they're being disrupted now because they're not drinking the water. Correct. So, but it's not a, that's not as disrupted as having to take a bus down to Frontier or Sunderland Elementary or wherever they would have to do if they have to swap tanks out. 
Well, they would have to. They couldn't go to school at the same time. They well, were working they, on the they'd have to, at least they'd two weeks. They flush the tank. They'd have to okay. um, disconnect it, drain it. Um, so if, school, if we're taking them up on their previous offer, they would reline. You talked about relining, yeah. Right. Yeah. So school wouldn't be in session during that that period. That was right. what we were told that it would be a minimum of two week disruption to school. Um, Have they given us any reason and, and, why this is still happening? And and the, the last I heard that it was that it would be a, a one week disruption. But I can you know I can easily see how it would go longer. And they uh, did. They are blaming the actual physical location of the tank for the reason of uh, why it's taking so long, and that it's actually underneath the concrete pad uh, with an entrance that requires somebody young and, and skinny to get into it and it's basically impossible to get into um, and that that's why they can't give it the degree of attention that they could had it been in a location that is exposed and easy to work in. Okay, but we're still having a problem. Yes. yes. And this is how long this time? And, and I, you know, we're getting closer though. The numbers are going down. So, so from what they told us that uh, it's now barely, and we, we all had a taste, we had taste testings from the various water fountains and fountains, mm -hmm. and you could only detect the slightest, mildest aftertaste, but the water is clear and it looked okay, and uh, I drank mm -hmm. it, no problem. Nobody got sick okay. that I know of. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so basically. So that was just your first question, but yeah. sorry, sorry. But yeah. Well, you, you, you might, you might read the, uh, Substantive part of that, just to make sure it's consonant with the uh, with the grammar school's request of the superintendent. All right. Well, this is this is a letter to uh, Mr. Kufferberg from the uh, Mass Tank people, who were the ones who put who relined the tank. In response to your email dated September 6, 2018, we still have several questions about the lining performed uh, by your firm on the uh, water tank at Conway Grammar School. We are still con concerned about the odor taste and test results for VOCs. VOCs are what? Volatile, Volatile organic, organic compounds. compounds. Volatile organic compounds? Stuff you don't want in your water. Okay. Mm. And, and would like some commitments and a timeline as to how this will be resolved. Since your firm quoted perform the work, we look to you as having the responsibility to ensure that some level of expertise was utilized in the decision to use this material as well as in its application. We need answers to the following questions. How could the VOCs identified in the original water sample after the tank landing was installed have been introduced into the water? That's one. Were the products used to clean and align the tank selected and applied properly? Was the time your technicians uh, indicated they should wait uh, before refilling the tank correct? Is there a proper detailed plan to reopen the tank, examine the liner, and do any required testing to ensure that this installation will be successful? Uh, this plan would in, uh, need to include a timeline approved by our water consultant, Michael Blaine, allowing for enough time to do the entire work when school is unoccupied. And they're talking about a week to do this? He's saying that, two. that school would have to be closed for at least two weeks or the building would have, children would not be permitted in the building for at least two weeks. Two weeks. So that's yes. over, okay. that's longer than even Christmas vacation. Correct. Ooh. okay. All right. Uh, I'll make a motion. That we so I, I like that letter. That there, I had a couple thoughts about that, which is yeah. one that it might be a good place to put. Do you, you know, something like, do you have any explanation for the fact that the three substances that are being identified uh, as VOCs that, are, that are be, have been identified as testing positive for are substances that you use in your manufacturing of the tank? And do you have any uh, other explanation? Or the cleaning of the tank. Or do you have any ex other explanation how those substances could be present other than your manufacturing error or something to that effect that that might be a good place to other than that I thought the and even including that I thought the letter was yeah. very good and it doesn't the, contradict anything that the school committee is doing the the first point the first question gets to that it's a it little bit more general if you could restate that one 
Yeah. How could the VOCs identified in the original water s sampling after the tank lining was installed have been introduced into the water? Almost the same. Yeah. Sure. All right. I'll make a motion that we, uh, we sign this letter to Mass Tank. Do I have a second? Second. All right. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Can't hurt. Pile on. Yeah. No 15 yard penalty. Yeah. Okay, next item on the agenda. Bruden, you're up. Yeah, great. Hey guys, I'm Bruden. I know all of you guys. We've met, uh, we're neighbors. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, no problem. Uh, thanks for seeing me on short notice. Uh, so the long and short of it is Jack Gates. You guys probably know, most of you know. He's uh, <clears throat> kind of suddenly resigned from the CONCOM. I don't know if you guys got the memo. Jack has resigned. He has resigned yeah. very suddenly. Um, which uh, he can speak for the reasons. That's not my place here. Uh, my place sure. here is that we are currently without a head, we're without a quorum, and I think it's a problem on several levels, particularly because CONCOM's a permitting agency, not sure. an agency, but we're a permitting body at the very least, and we have to do all the sign-offs for, um, for every building permit in town. Sure. Every septic, every well, you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. pretty, we're pretty in, involved. Um, so, and that puts us in a bit of a spot because, so we're down to kind of four members. Marcel Morgan has been nice to stay on the committee. She tried to leave mm -hmm. at least a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, we're like, please stay on for the emergencies when we need quorums. So she's very nicely been with us. Um, there's Peter Zale. I don't know if you guys know him. Sure. He's on the CPC. I think he has this, sorry, the CPC, but he's actually mm -hmm. fallen in bad health, I believe. Oh, no. Um, yeah, I don't know the extent, but I know he's having a hard time getting around, which is particularly hard for CONCOM as we do a lot of site sure. visits. Yeah. Peter yeah. was kind of our backup site visit guy. Yeah. And then there's Bob Novak. I don't know if you guys know him. He's an old timer. Um, he lives out on Whaley Road and he's great, but he's not online and mm -hmm. he's really new to the thing and he's just recently... Didn't we just appoint him? He moved from... Uh, uh, from associate. Yeah, associate. Yeah, right. So. Um, and and not a lot need, of traction need, there, I don't you think. You need five members? Well, I think we only need three. Well, okay. and then we went through this whole, um, what a quorum meant for CONCOM, and that, we went over, that was a couple, it wasn't that long ago, and yeah. I can't quite remember how it all came down, but I don't think we made any changes, really. Right. Um, so I think we are supposed to have five, you're exactly right. And but a quorum is three. But a quorum is three. Okay. So, and then we still kind of have that between me and Marcel, and Bob. But then, but then there's all the work you have to do. So you, It's the you, work you, you, and I, I'm full-time employed, you know, in sure. Northampton and sure. I got two teenagers, so. Oh, um, yeah, that's Which is great. And, yeah. But uh, I don't have the time definitely during work hours to sure. be in town. Um, sure. So that kind of puts us in a spot. And uh, Mr. Moore used to be the liaison for right. CONCOM, right. Um, but he's no longer with you guys. Yeah. <coughs> Have you thought about asking Peter to come back, Peter Cheswell? I haven't thought about anything really. I mean, okay. uh, there's all sorts of people who have served and, and could serve. Um, yeah, so I guess I'm looking for some advice. You have um, a, a, a proposed chair? I don't, and it yeah. shouldn't be me. Mm -hmm. um, this came up. <laughs> no, no pressure. Just no, no, I'm letting you know. Yeah, that yeah. I, I've totally, of course, I've thought about it. I'm by far the senior guy on the committee and, uh, and passed on it when Peter retired um, just because I just don't have the time. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. It couldn't be the new, it can't be the new person right away. Well, but, Jack was actually the new person at the time and he wow. took it because he's organized and a good guy wow, and yeah. kind of had the time and was interested. So okay. um, I don't think that's not necessarily a thing, yeah. but I don't think any existing member, um, I can't speak for everybody. Mm. Can't speak for Peter, but I can speak for Marcel and myself, and I think Bob. Where it wouldn't be appropriate. So I'm, I'm thinking about the couple that was here a couple meetings ago with regard to the telephone pole replacement. I'm not sure how much Road. time they're in Conway. They did express an interest in serving with the town did. committee, though. Yeah, and did. here's a town committee that needs people. So I say we play let. There Matt's is, right but we've also well, been. Okay, there's a big responsibility being on mm. on, on Conway. Yeah. Um, they seem like sober people. Well, there's a lot to know, and there's a lot to learn. Their house is probably, you know, a year away of, of, uh, of renovation that they're doing. I mean, they're... Yeah, and, and my understanding is they will only be here part-time when they move here. Uh, that's an idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you're, so you we're in a bit of a pickle, and we've been shape. advertising yeah. for folks for years. I mean, it's been a pretty regular thing, and, um, you know, the rag... The, 
The publication, The Visitor, that's it. The rag. Um, the rag. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm looking for advice. Uh, you know, it falls on you guys, you're the parents. So <laughs> here's your child coming and asking for help. I can definitely hold down the fort for a little while. It's coming into the slow season where there's not a lot of action. And we basically go down to one a day, or one a month, I'm sorry, one meeting a month. So mm -hmm. that's good. Um, but like the church just came in, big stuff, it happens all the time. And um, there's ongoing forcing, there's a lot of stuff. So I need someone, we need someone to deal with just the stuff, the, the paperwork, and someone particularly to do the site visits. Is the paperwork what the chair usually does? Some of it, and it's just really dealing with the mail, and it's not, it's not even that much work. Time-wise, it's just kind of, you know, we do site visits on the weekends. Um, mm. it's, it's not a huge time commitment, although I bet Jack would say otherwise. My time commitment's not huge, uh, but even what I do is. Mm -hmm. so Jack's been the one to show up at my house. When yeah, Jack's great, and, um, you know, and he's really been on it, but I will yeah. not be able to give that kind of service, um, yeah. and nor do I want to be the guy on the list to do these visits. Mm -hmm. um, I hate to be blunt, but I'd rather be playing with you guys and not keep So what also. happens in this? I mean, do you know what other towns do? I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Service, service, service suffers. Around. They make appointments for the one day a month when someone's available. That's mm -hmm. what that's what other towns have been forced to do. But yeah, we're also so mandated but, to um, act within a certain time frame yeah, when we get uh, applications. Yes. We have yeah. a three-week thing, so, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, theoretically we could batch them all on weekends, but then the professionals aren't always keen on working, you know, coming in on a Sunday at 9 o'clock. Good Lord, that's family time. And, mm -hmm. um, so I'm sharing my problem with you guys, okay. and I think I can hold down the fort for a little while. Um, and I don't know if one of you guys has to come on in the short term just to provide the bodies. I mean, we need warm bodies, if nothing else. Um, mm -hmm. How much training does it take to, to know what the regulations are? No? The regulations are complex. Yeah. Uh, and I've been doing it for maybe eight years now, and I'm getting pretty comfortable. Um, you know, it's just, mm -hmm. it's a book that big. We don't live on the coast, so that's really nice. Well, I mean, I know the, the, the board has stepped in. You know, you were on, was it the zoning board or the, one of the boards for a while? ZPA. Yeah. 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 I'm still on that. Mm -hmm. can, can can we can we do one of these with ComCom -com as well? You think? Sure. Okay. Um, we're, we're gonna we're, we're putting something in the um, in the bills, the tax bills, to go out to everybody okay. for an administrative assistant. So we'll put we'll put something in for ComCom -com as well. That'd be great. Um, you know, and it's, it's just all happened so fast, and I, I really don't want to get caught. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Not know. fulfilling the town's duties, especially with permitting stuff, and I fear like I don't know I don't. Jack's going to debrief me this weekend okay. um, and kind of walk me through all this stuff, but I don't even know, I don't even know what I don't know. Yeah, and I think that's right. probably more right. of a problem. And I don't know where FERCOG comes in on all of this, if they can help, um, if that's part of their charter, you know, it's, mm -hmm. um, they have a pretty broad fee for service organization. Well, I know, I know, but it's, yeah. um, I don't, Okay. A uh, couple of things, yeah. um, three things actually. First, um, Anything that is now being sent to the CONCOM email is being directed to Bruton as the contact. Yeah, who's okay. monitoring um, that? Or is it automatically bumped it's to me? Uh, yeah, it's automatically redirected. Okay, well that's um, good, because I don't have the password or any of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, you don't. Um, and, um, you know, theoretically, if there is a statutory requirement of the town and there isn't a committee to fill it. It does devolve on the select board to do that work. Right. Um, the, I don't think the COG has a, a conservation agent program, but it doesn't mean that we couldn't engage the services of a conservation agent that was working in a, a nearby town and have them do uh, what the committee is now doing as staff work. Um, but that would be that would. Be real money. That would be uh, real money after yeah. after a certain point. I can point, see that. You know, yeah. um, so uh, that's something that I can I can look at uh, sort of for the long term. And we, you know, short term you're holding down the fort. Medium term we'll send out a a notice saying we really need people for the conservation commission. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we can put something in the visitor, and yeah. we'll, we'll definitely do what we can. But okay. can you uh, can you do that? Yeah, I don't even know who runs that. 
Um, we, we, have a, we have an email address. Mar we have Marcus. Uh, Marcus. Is it Marcus? Yeah. Yeah. Marcus. 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 He's taking control over that. But it's like visitor at Town of Conway. I'm sure I have one at home. Not Town of Conway. It's not. The thing that, because that, um, I, I had seen Marcel Morgan, and she did give me permission to say this, that um, she is now so swamped that she doesn't even think that she can help with the quorum in the next few months, is what she said, that oh. she's yeah, starting a teaching a thing, whatever. And that she just, you know, she was, you know, he's going to be coming, and it's a real serious thing that they really do need to get someone ASAP. Yes, and I, I have her down for next weekend because we have a next week we have an important one for the church, mm -hmm. um, and then there's nothing really on the docket. Oh, so okay, uucfconway.org. Yeah, I see right here, visitor. UCC. UCC. All right, cool. Um, so there it is. Okay. I don't know. I don't know where to go. All right. Love some, we'll, um, we'll do whatever we can to help. Advice, um, but like I said, I don't know if we, should, if you guys, one of you guys gets to join the concom in the short term. Um, I don't know what Peter's deal is. Um, so I <coughs> yeah, have to check yeah. in with him. Yeah, if you can check in with him and get back to me, that will help. I know you guys. I'm wondering if Peter can do more of the paperwork rather than because you say he can't do the visitor. Yeah, visit but he's visitor. pretty. He's pretty new and green on the committee, and it's. Um, Plus, he already chairs a committee. Yeah. You know, we're all just recycling the same couple yeah. dozen people. Yeah. I totally get that. that. that that's yeah. the problem. <laughs> that's yeah. the problem. We need some new blood. But yeah. Um, so, yeah. I just don't want to get to a point where we don't have enough bodies at a meeting. And um, Okay. Well, obviously, if, if we can't get anybody from a visitor ad or, or something in the, in the tax bill, then one of us is going to have to fill in. So... Uh, and just how it's tracked in the past, um, you may want to just consider that now. Uh, just because we've had zero people. That doesn't mean we won't. Mm -hmm. um, the optimism we like to see. No, no, I'm in. No. I really hope we can. And it's, it's actually a pretty good gig. It's not that much time. Right. Um, and any of you guys, we would just be for helping out. I totally get that. Um, okay. Anything else? Yeah. Nope. Okay. Thanks, Thank Bruce. Thanks, Thanks for uh, everything we can. Yeah. 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 Sorry, Sorry for the aggravation. Sorry for the aggravation. There's no aggravation. It's yeah. just uh, it's just one of those things. You know. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. All right. Peace out. Hey. All right. Next item on our agenda is. Okay. A. Uh, possible joint meeting with the Board of Health regarding youth substance abuse prevention. Uh, Furkan? Yeah, last, uh, last year one of the items that uh, uh, the Select Board prioritized for direct local technical assistance was uh, working on youth substance ab abuse prevention. So we were recently contacted by the FERCOG and they suggested um, uh, that both the select board and the Board of Health uh, pretty obviously should be involved uh, in at least hearing what they have to offer and then seeing what, what we might want to uh, want All right, to so FERCOG's going to come and present yeah. to us. Okay. Yeah, and but, uh, that, but, that, but that... with respect, the people that offer services in this area are our local schools and uh, the, something like this and the path that you are sketching out is perfect recipe for uh, duplication of efforts. Uh, and FERCOG should be working, and they have in the past on this issue, and they do right now mm -hmm. on this issue, yes. work with our schools, and this should be a continued effort. And in, in particular, I will note that uh, two years ago, Frontier did have to lay off its one of its adjustment counselor who was tasked with working with the most at-risk students in substance abuse students. Uh, we had to lay that person off so that we could hire a police officer um, for uh, the legally mandated uh, school uh, uh, security efforts, whatever. So uh, it'd be really nice if FERCOG could furnish money to rehire the professional um, in this area or something like that. But Okay. Um, well, the October 22nd is going to be a Board of Health meeting Right. Uh, it's not a board select board meeting. Right. right. And so I thought that it could be a joint meeting where we both would hear what FERCOG had to offer and offer feedback. Okay, and so we'll, we'll do it over in the... Years, I remember there was, I, I went to one of their meetings years, this is five years, six years ago maybe, where FERCOG came and they had a, a survey program that they did in all them. They got 
but it basically it ended up a member of the sore feelings of the school because it was just duplicating the surveys that the school already does and had done a month earlier uh, mm -hmm. and it was basically the same results but it took up a lot of people's times and there was a time and there was a thinking there uh, the thought was that it produced nothing of use that wasn't just learned a month before on their own so well how about how about the the uh, opioid task force yeah we have we have that option right the one in greenfield yeah well that, that is sure. certainly an ongoing an ongoing effort mm -hmm. yeah i actually just did see the current survey for frontier kids and they're reporting no actual opioid use in the school um, no regular opioid use from students at Frontier, and it's mm -hmm. the only school in our county. How that many? Is how many in, in six hundred and something? And there's no opioid use. Yeah. They believe it. Marijuana use is at eighty percent. <laughs> Marijuana at eighty percent. Correct. No opioid use. Correct. And and like you said, drinking you drinking that drinking has plummeted. No. Drinking has plummeted. Drink. Nobody drinks anymore. No kids drink anymore. These well, are the you know, just just the football team and their friends. If, if you listen to um, who is it over for God? Cat. What's her name? Cat. What's Cat's last name? She's the one that that does the um, the Partnership study for of, youth. Yeah, exactly. And and you know her her big battle cry is the fact that uh, that marijuana is for children has a detrimental effect on their brain development. You know. Yeah. Um, so, you know. This is true. That's why it's not legal for those under 21. That's right. But if you're saying in high school you have 80% over there who that are have, smoking. That have experimented with it or know somebody that has. And uh, that those are, that's a pretty much uniform rate for kids in all of our schools. Wow. It's the. So that's not 80% using. That's 80% who know of someone or have tried it themselves or have tried it themselves okay. yeah well okay okay hopefully that's on the on the underside maybe there's a whole bunch of people that know one person is using you know how much would a grant like that be for well this is one out of several topics that they're pursuing and the grant, I don't think, is all that big. I mean, I can't imagine so, it's enough to hire a full-time. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it's not, it's not going to be anywhere near that. Um, it'll be materials and, and right. presentations. And the issues sort of student thing. opioid use are very closely correlated with student mental health and provision of mental health services and suicide. They're sure. all opposite sides of the same coin there. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. All right, so the, is the 22nd good for everybody? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's, let's do that. On the bill, so I check. Why don't I check? Well, I checked to see if it was a select board meeting, but it's our off Monday the 22nd of Monday. October. So, do you know what time? What time? Port of Health. Uh, Port of Health is what, 7 o'clock? I think they're at 7. 7 p.m., yes. 7, okay. All right, so that's the 22nd at 7. All right, so put us down for that time. Just so you all know, the following day I am giving a talk at the Historical Society in anniversary of Shays Rebellion. It's Conway's role in Shays Rebellion, and because I, I, we have documents that have never before been discussed in town, so it'll be oh, interesting. It, when is it that? Will, Tuesday the seventh, uh, Tuesday the twenty-third at seven thirty. It's only going to take about half an hour, but there's cool. documents that we came up with that are going to blow your mind from old town records. Interesting. Okay. And uh, I will have to go back and confirm this with the Board of Health. So sure, I'll, yeah. I'll be. Uh, this okay. is a, a, a pencil. Sure, date. sure. All right. Next item. Um, we had a we had a letter last week that um, we got from um, from Ken, Emily, and Tom Pleasant, who have purchased the uh, the Rose property at Forty Fournier Road. And uh, they requested that we increase the insurance, our insurance coverage for the lease. Now, we, we signed the lease with Greg Rose before purchase uh, was made. And we have $100,000 worth of insurance in that lease. And, and uh, I just uh, received notification that that will be acceptable, that we don't need to go any higher. So we actually don't need to send the letter. Good. Okay, so this letter doesn't mean anything right now. Okay, great, good. 
So that's tabled. All right, next item, uh, appoint a negotiating team representative, Union 38 teachers and instructional assistant successor agreements. Phil, haven't you been involved yes, in that? Yes, and um, so it actually last the last time around, I represented the school committee for Conway and Tom represented the select board. And I don't remember a lot of the specifics, but I do remember being impressed that on more than one occasion, Tom had a suggestion that was useful and actionable and resulted in a better negotiating outcome on a specific issue or two or three. That being said, uh, um, at, for, for reasons that I maybe have spoken to you individually about um, and would normally be uh, just uh, ripe for executive session, um, but since I had already looked the, the, the entire union membership in the eye and said, this is what I'm doing, this is what's happening, this is what's coming, <coughs> be ready. Um, I just want to talk about why it is that I'd like to do this on the behalf of the school committee and it's because I am chasing the negotiating, for me, a white whale, the Moby Dick, um, the, 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 revi the reformation of something that badly needs to be done systemically and people said it was impossible but I'm getting close and that's the revision to the sick pay provisions of employees. and. Three, uh, and I don't know if you do know this, but the contractual provisions over the years have manifested so that um, all the all the Union Thirty Eight Frontier membership, uh, union membership, is compensated upon retirement for accumulated sick days, and we have in the past, with one retirement of a teacher at Frontier uh, at Conway Grammar School, had a sudden surprise thirty five thousand dollar bill. Um, mm -hmm because the, 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 the retirement was, and so, be, uh, and beca when, when I had really taken a look at just how big of a budget impact this issue has mm -hmm. the whole system wide, and then did, we did a survey with the previous superintendent, two superintendents ago, did a su survey of all the schools, we're the only school district that anybody could find that has a benefit system like this on that particular issue. And so, so when, when I raised this three years ago, they all pointed out and said, look, all the administrators get this, all the non-union people get this, you can't start with us. But, um, and so over the past two years, I've effected changes as the head of the policy committee at Frontier and Conway Grammar School, I've effected changes in the policies so that non-union personnel can no longer get this benefit. Through contracts. So that means principals? No, that means janitors. I'm sorry, custodians, they were getting this benefit. They were getting this benefit. This benefit was accruing after one year of service, um, and so so that was the so we got to start with them. Then, with all the administrators that have been signed, um, including our principal, the new superintendent, we got them to even the new the new superintendent who had this vested already waived all of that, and because he knows that to sit down and ask for this from the teachers, he's got to have the same uh -huh. thing. So, I cleared the deck. And now it's the teacher's time. And it's not about getting money. It's just, this is just about fairness and about sure. the issue. And I'm not out to take money from people's pockets. But I've told them, so this is, this is normally, this is a negotiating strategy. This is normally executive session. But I've been very upfront that this is what's happening. Okay. And, um, and the, because the policies all differed from the contracts, all differed from exactly what the remuneration was. For, they're all different. And my goal is to... Uh, you know, I, have, I didn't line the duck to have them all in the same. Sure. And um, and per, be, have a predictable outcome when there's a retirement, so that we don't have to go. You know, so 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 for that reason, this has like, been like a big project, and I wanted to see it through. But I also want to know that I, that Conway Grammar School refused to to name anybody um, to to the negotiating committee. They felt that the, none of them had anything to add to the process, and they understood the time commitment. So. Um, I was wondering if, but, but, but I also know that not all of them support exactly what I'm trying to do. So I, I thought it would be better for me to uh, represent this, the select board in this instance and actually when the time comes to get written instructions from the select board to pursue this course. Um, cause, uh, but, I, but I also have an idea of, get, of having the school committee assign Tom uh, to represent them. So that's that's my idea. I 
um, uh, yeah. So that's where I, that's what that that's my current thinking, and I'm open to suggestions or. I understand the quizzical looks on your face. Could you make that happen? So you just want to switch places here, basically. Well, that's a, that's an easy way of saying it, and it would have saved me five minutes at least of explaining it, John. Thank you. Well, is that amenable to everybody? Um, if it is your will, I would think that the uh, that the school committee should should have someone who's been involved in their uh, policy and budgeting processes, which I have not. Um, I, I look at it, of course, from the sort of larger picture where it fits mm -hmm. into the town and things like that. I'm not particularly um, uh, wedded to participating in, in this particular negotiation. Um, so I, I don't I don't mind if, if the select board seat goes to somebody else, but I would feel awkward. Why would you uh, want to switch? I mean, what difference does it make if you're representing the select board as opposed to the school well, committee. I think he said that the Conway Grammar School Committee did not feel like appointing someone to the process. So I they all but when when it was explained so to them the that time when they didn't want to appoint you? No, did when it was explained no, they that they because I had announced that I um, for reasons that I just said that I would prefer representing the select board in this instance, but I'm gonna bring it up and we're gonna talk about it. Um, but uh, when, when it was announced the time commitment involved in this and the fact that when it's your first rodeo, you, uh, in something like this, at crowd, big tables where, where a lot of people have been to many rodeos before, mm -hmm. you feel small and yeah. insignificant. And, um, and it, so it's, it's to go to 10 meetings minimum or something like that, or that's, that's a, a, it's more like 20 meetings. Um, to, you always hope it's right, three. but but and, and to feel and to feel like you have no voice. Yeah, yeah. So nobody wanted to be the new guy, just sitting there observing in the hopes that three years from now you have something to add to the process because you've learned a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, um, Elaine Campbell did say that if that she might, she, she, but the time commitment was a big deal and it had nothing to do with mm -hmm. anything other than that. But from speaking about this in the committee uh, with the. My, this whole thing, there have been individual voices. There's people, members of the school committee are teachers, um, some of them, uh, and this is a hard thing for them to swallow in any, in it. so, uh, yeah, I don't know. So, <laughs> I, I'm fine with not being appointed by the select board. You're fine not being appointed. But we can't appoint you to the school committee. So. No. So, no, and but I hope they want. They don't. Oh, okay. Well. Oh, they could. But. But not, if, not, not, not if it's. We don't operate by compulsion. So, what's the best solution to this problem or this issue? I think it's fine if anyone is interested <laughs> uh, in uh, being a uh, representative from the select board. Then that's then that's great. Okay, so I, I did it last time because like none that. of the select board members wanted to do it. So yeah, to, to, well, to, to, to me, the because there's this one issue that is yeah. a serious issue, and I believe that I can accomplish this, and I think that I can be more effective if I have a letter of instruction as a selectman from the select board saying, this is what we as a select board, this is our contract objective, and please attend to this thing. Okay, so if you're the... the uh, the representative of the select board, where does that leave you? Not at the table. A happy bystander. Yeah, I mean, is, yeah. It, which is... Which does is, that, is that detrimental for us at all? I, I don't think so. Okay. So you don't mind not being included? Right. Okay, and it's all right with you to yes. do that. Okay. So you want to be the, the select board representative? As, yeah. Okay, and you have experience on this yeah. for, for years? Yes. Okay. And you're all right with that? Yeah. Okay. And I'll make a motion that we appoint Phil as our negotiating team representative for Union 38 Teachers and Instructional Assistants for successor agreements. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Phil. You're there. Okay. Is there a way you can put pressure on the school committee to send someone? With, with? Was this the, was this, I mean, we, we, Linda Baker came in and 
talking to somebody else and talked to us a year ago? Is that that same Yeah, see, everybody that involved everybody insurance. involved knows that it's not just this, that, that if you go this time to learn the ropes, yeah. then three years from now, you're the, you're the one. Uh -huh. And they're your ropes. Do something, you know. And so it's not just, people aren't just looking at this year's commitment. They're looking at it being in, uh, in every three-year process, and it's a lot to bite and chew off. And, um, so yeah. so our, our next matter of business is to appoint a negotiating team representative for Frontier Regional Teachers Association. Same thing. Do same. you want to be that? Yeah, same exact okay, thing. Fine. They all have to be the same policy. I'll make, I'll make a motion. Um, they, 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 they don't have to be the same. Right, and but one piece of information is that Tom Fittenkevitz from right. Sunderland had been uh, yes. the um, the representative and I believe that there's only one uh, representative for, for for from select boards for all four towns. So I think technically we may be nominating Phil. Um, we can appoint him and see what everybody else says, uh, but we didn't appoint Tom. Tom just said, "I'm, you know, last time it was, he was the last one who was on, so he wanted to do it again, so everybody said fine. Um, right, and apparently he does so, not so, want to be the rep uh -huh. this time right. around. So, so I would say, you know, um, pending other, other nominations. Okay, um, we'll nominate Phil. Yeah. No. And then are there are I'll, there any I'll other inform, nominations? You think? I'll inform the others. You think there might be other nominations? The way I, I understood it to be that each town select board is asked to send one representative to each of the negotiations. And okay, we, we, I could be were, wrong about that. We were not last time. Tom represented, as far as I understood, the four towns. Um, Cindy would know this history better than I would even. Um, Thank you again, though, for doing it. <laughs> Gotten this far. I just want to see it through. All right. Yeah, it's one one representative for all four towns. That's it. Uh, so uh, I'll I'll make a motion that we nom we nominate Phil for the negotiating team for Frontier Regional Teachers Association successor agreement. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Okay. So there may be yeah. one nomination for each town. All right. uh, the draft committee handbook. Tom, do you have something on that? Uh, you've, you've got copies of that. This is something I've, uh, that Lisa's really pulled together. Okay. Um, and it's something that we can give out to new committee members so that they understand how their work fits into the, the work of the town. The whole flow. And their okay. uh, roles and responsibilities and things like that. Obviously, it's intended to be a living document. Mm -hmm. Changes made as necessary. Um, any kinds of uh, suggestions or corrections are more than welcome. So I had a que yeah. question when I read it, but then it may be in here. It's, there's a lot of stuff in here. There is. One other thing that always comes up has to do with quorum. And, uh, and, and we talked about it a few minutes ago, making quorum. And, and it defines what quorum is. But some of the committees sometimes will change the quorum and will say your quorum is only two people. Or, so the, well, the, uh, quor no, the quorum, we, the no. quorum has so, to so be. So is that we change the number of people on the committee and that's how we change the quorum? Yes. Okay. Because that seems it, to come up the all the time. majority of the quorum members. has to be a majority. It does. Yeah. Yes. And and it's it's members appointed. No, it's it's this it's. There's always there's another question which is. Is it the number of members who are currently appointed, or the number of mem or the number of seats mm. on the committee? Um, and uh, I believe it's the number of seats on the committee, even if they're empty. Strictly speaking, because it all of the seats, if there are a certain number of seats, they should all be filled. That's my only question. Okay. Well, the, the the things that I notice is that we don't have any penalties for failure to comply with these sections and I, I know it comes up in some areas when somebody doesn't want to somebody votes on something that before they've been sworn in um, and everybody just says 
oh well. Um, and or, or when somebody hasn't taken the ethics uh, thing in years and they've just been in continuous service, but there's nothing that anybody can do to make them take the ethics thing. Well, well we, Tom except checks, send them letters over and over again. Yeah, Tom well, checks on that. We, we have made one change to the letter of appointment. Um, Lisa, maybe you actually want to mention it if you recall. There was a change to the letter of appointment which involved um, uh, taking action within a certain period of time for the appointment to be valid. I think it was two or three weeks. Right, I don't remember the exact time frame, but I think it was two weeks. Uh, that, that unless they get sworn in within that time, the appointment is, and to be sworn in, they have to show their conflict of interest. Um, I think they're supposed to show their conflict of interest sheet, but when they get sworn in. Right. So uh, we have been working with Jenny's office on that. We have also been noting in the town report when someone hasn't been shown, and we have the, the sort of scarlet asterisk, and oh, that uh, that indicates he, he, he was already here. Yeah. Chairman was Chairman here. Gates, how are you? I'm fine. Uh, no longer okay. chairman, as I recall. Correct. You're okay. already you're already he, gone. He asked me to come at six thirty, so. Oh, okay. Now he, he he was already here, and he explained the whole situation, and we're we're going to see what we can do to to rustle up uh, some more volunteers. Yeah, we're going to put a notice in the tax bills when they go out, so everybody in town, every family in town, will get one. Okay. All right. Okay. So you don't need me. Sorry. Yes, we do. Sorry about the. <laughs> yeah. Thank, yeah. thank you, Jack. Um, see you later. Yeah. Okay. That's. Anything else on the on the. The draft. No. Uh, the, uh, no. Um, well, um, I think this would be perfect for a public stockade and being sentenced to a couple hours and just sitting to stand in it. But other than that, yeah, I, I can't think of a punishment. I think this is a good summary. Yeah. Well, what what we um, what we note, and I'm not sure whether it's noted specifically in there or not, but uh, when the question does come up, we just say that if anyone challenges a decision. Um, if everyone, if, if there wasn't a quorum of members present and a member is being defined as having been sworn in and taken a conflict of, in, uh, of interest uh, test, mm -hmm. uh, then that, uh, whatever decisions were made under those circumstances aren't valid. And that, that's particularly important, of course, with the permitting bodies. Uh, but it also um, has to do with any committee that's spending any money, really. Uh, you know, if it's community preservation or, or uh, maybe Parks and Rec is spending money on something or something like that, it really does, um, it really can matter if someone challenges a decision. Uh, they would win if they said this, this money was spent, you know, uh, not, not with due process. Mm -hmm. and, and so we are very cognizant of that and we try to work on it. Um, uh, and I think we've made improvements there's still room for more improvement. Uh, it's a constant process of education because not everybody comes into volunteering for the town with the same uh, knowledge or appreciation of that knowledge. So uh, point very well taken and, mm -hmm. and we do what we can and we are moving things forward, uh, including with the appointment letter. Okay. And I, I would just like to add to that that um, we, there have been more people who have been trying to get their conflict of interest test online. You know, there's a lot of people who don't want to do something online. They really don't like it or they don't have a computer at home or whatever. So we've been working with, um, to make it easier for people, like for example, Council on Aging. They all came in one day and sat here with me Oh. and did it online oh. here hmm. you know so um and i know laura's been working with some of the people in town you know who have just come in to do that at the town hall on their computer so i think people are starting to um <coughs> get more of an idea that it will make it as easy for them yeah. as we can and the online course itself has gotten so much friendlier it used to make you feel yep. stupid when you got an answer wrong 
No, now, it's not. Now it tells you what the right answer it is does. when you're the answer much. wrong. It Pretty does. Much. It's yeah. really not that bad, you know, so I think I think that's helping, you know, the word will get out eventually that But you have to right, have the right browser on your computer. Right, so that's why that's we've said to explore. people. It pretty much, you yeah. Yeah, you have to have the Internet Explorer, but, you know, they can come, people can come in here and do it. Mm -hmm. So, okay. And uh, you, what we've tried to do is balance giving them really good information with not giving them too much information. And it may look like a lot to some people. Um, you know, we can play with formatting it to more white space, sure. some <laughs> pictures, things like that. Um, but this is what we have so far. And, I, uh, I think it's fine. Yeah. Any um, again, any uh, suggestions or corrections are more than welcome. Yeah. Well, like you say, it's, got, it's a living document. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. All right. Next item is the uh, approve the bill insert notifying residents of the administrative assistant position. Any suggestions on changes to this? Looks good to me. Yeah. If we could print three out on the back, you know, move three up. Uh, we'll, we'll have a we'll have a separate one. Okay. For the conservation. Can we do can we do that on pink paper with a big urgent on the top? <laughs> you know, asking for con -com committee members. Is pink is the universal color of urgency? <laughs> well, it might be. <laughs> for most bills, it is when it comes in looking pink. I, I guess so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Not items not anticipated forty eight hours in advance of the meeting. Tom, anything? I don't have anything. Okay, I, I have one one question um, that came up. Uh, the Capital Improvements Planning Committee spreadsheet. Why isn't that online? Ah. Uh, that's part of the long range plan. It was on our old website. When we switched to the new website, that was one of the ones that didn't travel. I had meant to get it up today, but it'll go up tomorrow. Okay, yeah. Can we get that up? Because I had a question on, on why that isn't there so mm -hmm. people can view it. So, I, so the Capital uh, Improvement Committee chairperson on his own brought this issue up yesterday in conversation um, because he, he recalled that he had promised in town meeting, um, and he brought this up, that, that he would post this. Mm -hmm. And the discussion at town meeting when the individual questioned the highway and over a similar pro made him recall his promise and I was approached with an it saying he's going to get that posted ASAP. Yes. Okay. So, so all right, that'll be up shortly. All right. Thank you, Tom. Um, your update, Tom? Yeah. On uh, committee news, I got a complaint from an electrician about items being stored in the boiler room. Uh, currently, both Council on Aging Medical Equipment for loaning to seniors, and I believe some Festival of the Hills chairs um, are, are there. And we've been told previously by our building inspector that we have to clear it out and not use it as a storage room. I've notified both parties. Since the festival chairs are presumably town chairs, as they predate the separation, I may have to get those moved myself. Uh, the Council on Aging had stored their materials in the town office basement before, and although the chair believes a shed near the Rose property would work, I have heard that it is not suitable for storage, so we're still in the process of sorting that out, okay. in case you hear anything. Okay. Uh, so a lot of the festival stuff is all stored below the bank. In the, Correct. in the bank basement. Um, if they're festival chairs and the town doesn't use them for anything else, maybe they could go there. Maybe they have gone there. I don't know. Yeah. They were looking to take everything festival related there. Uh, we took a, a lot of yeah, festival yeah. stuff there last night. Yep, we did. Or Sunday night, I remember. Yeah, last night. In uh, departmental news, tax bills should go out October 15th or 16th. Uh, there's been a lot of last-minute activity, as the assessors have had a lot of information to work with they didn't expect. That said, they expect the new information to be good for the tax rate. We still have to wait for the tax classification hearing to submit our FY 2019 tax recap to the Department of Revenue. Once that happens, 
the tax rate is set and we can send the bill set. And you rescheduled that? Thir to Thursday at 5 p.m., which um, Phil wants it earlier and you want it later. So, no. Uh, um, so that seemed to work. And John may not be able to be here. I can only make four because I've got, I've got a five and a six o'clock oh. meeting. <laughs> Wow. If, yeah, because well, that's the night that the joint that that the unveil of the building renovation ten year plan is taking place at that's six o'clock at Frontier, but with the pre meeting at five thirty. So, I, so Lee and I both agree we can get it done in ten to fifteen minutes. So okay, so it's at five o'clock. Unless you don't no, want to no. come and it's at four five. for oh. the two of you. You can do well, five. Actually, we've already we've already set it for five. Right. I had to send it into the report. Right. right. It's today, already right? it's already done for yeah. five. I can't be there. Yeah. But you guys you okay. guys know about it, and you know we're just going to approve a single tax rate. Uh, well, that, that that is the presumption. That's the yeah. <laughs> we'll wait for the presentation. <laughs> I have no plans to do anything other than that. So no. if that's okay. if anybody's asking, me. that's good to know. <laughs> um, I have a uh, correction to some information I've been interested in. Uh, a number of towns have hit their levy ceiling, <clears throat> the maximum amount they can levy according to Proposition 2.5. This does not mean that they have tax rates of $25 on the thousand. It does mean that their ability to raise funds is strictly limited by the formula in Proposition 2.5, which is that percentage of growth plus new growth plus any extra state revenue. It also means that they cannot pass an override. In FY 2018, according to DOR, five cities hit their levy limit and 17 cities and towns approached it. Seven were at 90 95% or more and seven from 90 to 95%. If home values don't rise while spending grows, these figures will grow. Mm -hmm. um, I, there, are, there. I don't believe there are any towns with a with a tax rate of twenty five dollars on the thousand. But that's um, that's a, a consequence of this as well. And tax rates in Franklin County over the the last twelve years or so have gone from more or less the ten to seventeen dollar range to the thirteen to twenty two dollar range. So there's a definite trend. Um, for tax rates to rise. Some of that is because property values are not rising and there's no new growth, so the rates have to rise in order for the level of taxation even to remain steady. So, so do you know if there's any plans of the state to try to solve this somehow? Well, I, I, I mean, uh, yeah, it's going to happen to Economic all. growth. Yeah. Don't spend as much. Um, That's it. I, you know, one of the things that whenever I make a complaint about school spending, I am reminded by our three, my colleagues from our three neighboring towns that Conway has the most room in its debt ceiling, levy ceiling of all of our four towns, and I'm, I should be the last person to complain about anything as a result. Um, the other towns should be complaining that, too. And, but oh, they are. Apparently, Deerfield, Deerfield and Sunderland are, or all three of them are like much closer to it than we are. Yes. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, I attended the fall conference of the Massachusetts Municipal Personnel Association and brought back several items that will strengthen our system, one of which has already been implemented, thanks to Lisa's quick work. Um, the new equal pay law prohibits asking job applicants for prior earnings, so uh, Lisa, my hardworking assistant, has removed that from our job application and reposted a, a compliant version on the website. Uh, asking during job interviews is also prohibited, mm. by the way, now. Uh, finally, we have received a $7,500 grant to update our hazard mitigation plan, which enables us to apply for FEMA hazard mitigation grants, such as work on Delavar Avenue. Uh, since we did not go forward with the grant match article, I've asked the Finance Committee for a reserve fund transfer of $2,500. Uh, I intend to propose the grant match article again this spring. Okay. Thank you, Tom. 
Okay, select board comments. Do we have any comments? No comments. Okay, mail. Let's see what we got in the mail. Okay, Franklin County Regional Council of Governments. Franklin Regional Council of Governments invites you to the future of municipal workforce succession planning and skills gap report. That's this Thursday the 4th from 6 to 8. We're already all busy. Mm -hmm. So, okay. We just talked about succession planning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I will have something for you that, uh, for you soon on that. I do want to go to this workshop first. Though. Mm -hmm. um, we got a letter from um, Massachusetts Municipal Association. The, um, the legislative breakfast meetings are starting uh, the 12th, the 19th, and the 26th. Sunderland. The one on the 26th is in Sunderland. That's the closest one to us. You can't beat that, though. Don't That's right. That. And they're they're always uh, they're always always very very good to to attend. Uh, a lot of good information from uh, uh, the MMA on that. So that's the, the we used to get talked by Peter Kokot and by by uh, Steve Kulik. See, so, yeah. Uh, now we'll get now we'll get talks by wet behind the ears. Yes, well, Peter Kokot was excellent. Yeah, all the time. So that's in Sunderland at the Sunderland Library uh, on October 26th at 8 a.m. Ends at 10 a.m. Natalie. Uh, October 25th, is that what you said? The 26th. It's Friday the 26th. Friday the 26th. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it is. Yeah. 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 Natalie Blaze did make a, a appearance at our festival yesterday. Oh, good. Good. All right. I couldn't good. talk her to the skillet toss. So. Oh, okay. She says next year. Next year. Gonna, gonna do some weightlifting. Uh, okay, we got a, um, a press release from uh, Senator Hines. He announces the 2018 holiday card contest for local students grades three to six. Invites Invited to design the Senator's um, 2018 holiday greeting card. Okay, and celebrate the holidays with Senator Hines and staff during a holiday open house on December the 13th. So, any more information on that? You? Yeah, I would uh, say maybe we should forward that to the school. Principal? Yeah. Forward just, that to Principal Gordon. Just to make sure. Yeah. Um, did everybody see the email from uh, Beth Gershman? Everybody saw that. That was from last. That was, was that the one from a couple weeks ago? Uh, no, the upcoming, the upcoming that's upcoming first. meeting. The upcoming meeting of the uh, Mohawk uh, Trails uh, Woodlands Partnership. October twenty. No, October sixteenth. October sixteenth at six thirty. We we all we all got copied on that email on this email. So. Okay. So I've gone before, but I can't go to this one. I have another meeting. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this right. is the Mohawk Trails Woodlands Partnership, and it'll be a, a hot meeting because this will be their first meeting since they were awarded, you know, since it went through the legislative process and the governor signed it and they have money. And they can talk about what to do. Oh, boy. Okay. Any announcements? Anybody have any announcements? No? Um, I'll, yes. I'll just announce that uh, the uh, um, FERCOG is looking for people to attend the Citizen Planner Training Collaborative Workshop on Site Plan Review, which is coming up soon. I can get the date if anyone's interested. I have sent that to the planning board as well. Uh, it's It'll be uh, somewhat uh, timely because we do have provisions for site plan review for any marijuana establishments that want to come into town. And this is the sort of thing that would, uh, that would allow the public input on how it looks from the street, um, where it's sited on a piece of property, that sort of thing. So this is a workshop about how that process works according to state law. Uh, the Citizen Planner Training Collaborative goes around the state doing uh, workshops on 
topics of planning technique. Mm. So if anyone is interested, it's open to anyone. So. Okay. Thank you, Tom. All right. Our next meeting is scheduled for October uh, 15th here. Um, oh, why does it say Conway Grammar School? It should be 6 p.m. here, right? Yeah. I wondered about that. Yeah, it's not the grammar school. Hmm. No, it will be at the town office. At uh, 6 p.m.? I thought um, it was a scheduled tank showdown or something like that. <laughs> if there is uh, no more business... Don't get to us to climb down to that. Yeah, right. If there's no more business to come before the board, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.